So this is basically a revision video for everything coming on the ICT theory paper. Now the paper is actually happening tomorrow, so I guess perfect timing. A few days back we asked you guys through Instagram what topics you found the hardest. So this is basically a compilation of our videos, but focusing only on the important parts. Firstly, under unit 1, digital devices, we have 10 videos. A fairly simple chapter, so we didn't really get much requests from this. However, we were requested on storage media. So let's take a look at that. Hard disk drives. These have hard disk media. This could be connected either internally or through external methods like Wi-Fi or through USB ports. Solid straight drives. SSDs, often called flash drives, have flash media. These have replaced hard disk drives in newer laptops. Hard disks. A hard disk has many concentric platters, which are circular objects sharing the same central point, that spin on a central spindle. As it is spinning, a read or write head will move on the platter, fetching something or writing something. Faster the spinning of the platters, the faster the data will be fetched or written. Optical Discs There are three main types of optical discs. CDs This is the oldest method, where only up to roughly 700 MB can be stored, and this is written on using a laser. DVDs Similar to CDs, but can store much more data, up to 4.7 GB on a single-sided DVD, and 18 GB on a double-sided DVD. It is written on using a red laser light. Blu-rays the newest method, storing about 25 GB on a one-sided disc and 50 GB on a double-sided disc. It has a scratch protection coating and is written on using violet laser light. Another request from Unit 1 was the RAM and ROM section. So here you go. Memory. Memory is used to store instructions so that the processor can fetch the instructions quickly. There are three types of memory. Random access memory. Software is loaded into the RAM from the secondary storage. RAM is volatile, so when the power is turned off, all data held will be lost. The more the RAM, the more programs can be opened at the same time. If the RAM is full, the system takes space from the secondary storage to use as RAM, known as virtual memory. This slows down the computer. By adding more RAM, the performance of the computer can be improved. Read-only memory. ROM stores data permanently. ROM is non-volatile, so data is not lost when power is turned off. Computers use ROM to boot the system, while otherwise ROM is used in single-purpose computers, like calculators. P-ROM is programmable ROM, where data can only be written on once. E-PROM is erasable programmable ROM, and EEPROM, electrically erasable programmable ROM, can be changed the contents. Flash memory. Flash memory is a type of EEPROM. Next, under Unit 2, Connectivity, we have 8 videos. Unit 2 is definitely a harder chapter than Unit 1, but def not the hardest, I would say. We got a few requests for factors that affect data transfer. So, here it is. Let's take a look at some factors that affect speed and volume of data transfer. First is transfer method. Wireless methods have to work on a limited number of frequencies, but wire, that is copper cables, can carry more frequencies than wireless methods. So, cable methods have more bandwidth than wireless methods. Interference Other electromagnetic signals could disrupt or interfere with the wired and wireless signals. Cable connections can sometimes act as shields from interference by having the wires wrapped in a thin layer of metal. Blockages Walls and furnitures reduce the strength of wireless signals. This reduces the available bandwidth. Distance The strength of a wired or wireless signal is reduced as the distance that it has to travel increases. We also got a few requests for components of wireless systems. So here it is. Now let's take a look at the components of a wireless system. Wireless access point. This allows devices connected to the Wi-Fi to connect to a wired network. Wireless access points can be found in routers built in, but they are often available as standalone devices. Switch. This connects devices on a network. 
which is have ports that connect to devices through a cable. A smarter way would be to connect a wireless access point to a switch to allow wireless access. Gateway A gateway is used to connect two different networks like a LAN to a WAN. Router Stores the address of a connected device to forward data traffic through the fastest route. Most routers have inbuilt switches, wireless access points and even act as gateways. Booster This amplifies the signal to extend the range. Ethernet cables need boosters every 100 meters, and even Wi-Fi would need a booster past the signal limit. Another was a request for the comparison of wired and wireless connections, so let's play that one too. Now let's compare the wired and wireless connections. Wired communication has a small number of cables, so it is cheap. There's a risk of tripping over cables. It is faster than wireless connections. It's, in, it's affected by interference but very less. It is not portable as it can't go past 100 meters. It can look untidy if not kept properly. And it is secure. Wireless connections have no need to buy cables and the router is priced at a medium price. There are no safety risks as the WHS confirmed there's no problem for radiation. Slower than wired. It is affected by interference. It's portable within a certain range. It is tidy. And it is easy to intercept. Moving on to the largest chapter, Unit 3, Operating Online. We have 12 videos from Unit 3. The biggest chapter and definitely the one with the most content, we got quite a few requests here. The first is for a short recap of the protocols on the internet. The internet. the internet is the interconnected network of computers. The internet uses protocols to transfer data. Protocols are rules that allow the exchange and transmission of data between devices. Some protocols are HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, used for the World Wide Web, FTP, File Transfer Protocol, used to send files, SSH, Secure Shell, for secure remote login, IMAP, Internet Message Protocol for emailing, VOLP, Voice over Internet Protocol for voice calls, XMPP, Extensible Messaging Presence Protocol for messaging services. Another request was for the working practices affected by the Internet. Working practices. Working practices is the way that people carry out a certain task as part of their job. You could say that the internet's impact on the working practice of an individual has had two main changes. Collaborative working. This allows work to be split into individual tasks. Some benefits of this would be each employee can work on one task and each employee can become an expert in their task. Drawbacks. Do not share skills or expertise. There is a reduced image of the big picture for each employee. Collaborative working could also lead to allowing more than one person on one task. Some benefits would be shared expertise and they can check each other's works. But some drawbacks might be difficult to coordinate with many people, difficult for many people to agree on one thing. Flexible working. Benefits. You can work at whatever time you prefer. You can fit work and family together. Drawbacks. Employees do not face meet face to face and they may not manage work in the right way. Flexible working. Work while traveling. Benefits. Access up-to-date information and work anywhere as long as there is internet. Drawbacks. If you are exhausted and long hours while traveling not have access to all facilities and resources. We got a request for the entire online communities chapter. Online communities. An online community is a group of people who communicate online, who have a similar interest. 
Every online community has a function, what it does, and features that enable its functions. Different communities have different functions and features. Let's take a look at some of the different communities available online. Social networking communities. Social network is the forming of groups in a society. Online, we have endless possibilities, which we channel into social media, like Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. The function of social networking communities is to connect people around the world with shared interests. Some communities are professional, like LinkedIn, while others are more personal, like Instagram. Let's take a look at some common features of social networking sites. Profiles A profile is a collection of information for a user. Some information you might include in a personal profile could be name, gender, short description, work or education, travel history, contact information, profile pictures, and background pictures. Friend, follow, subscribe. Many social networking communities allow you to add someone to your social network, each community calling it something different. YouTube says subscribe, Instagram says follow, and Facebook says friend. Stream wall timeline. Usually, all posts by a user appear in one section, called a wall or timeline or stream. This helps as the information is now brought to the user instead of having the user search for it. Likes, reactions. Some social networking communities allow users to show their reaction to posts by either liking the post, disliking it, or reacting to the post. This allows users to recommend posts to other members. Share. Sharing allows the user to repeat someone's post to more members of the community. Due to this, the original post will be available to a wider range of people, allowing the post to get more views or reactions, even making it viral. Comments Users can share what they think about a post through the comment section. This allows people to have online conversations on the topics of the post. Status update Members of a social networking community can post status updates to let other people know any important updates or just to show what's going on. Tags Users can use tags to categorize the content that they post in a network. This way, other members will be able to find this if they search for the specific tag. User suggestions Some communities suggest more content or other users that you might like based on who you follow and based on your interests as well. Online Gaming Communities The function of online gaming communities is to allow members to play together. Some features of online gaming communities include social media links, experience points, user profiles, information on games, and discussion forums. Online Work Communities The function of online work communities is to allow members to collaborate for work. Some features of online work communities include cloud storage, comments, collaborative work, messaging systems, shared calendars, virtual meeting spaces, and chat rooms. Virtual learning environments. The function of VLEs is to allow students and teachers to learn together online. Some features of VLEs include wall or timeline, notice board, share quizzes or tests, submitting assignments, communication tools, Login systems, document editors, and grade books. User generated sites. User generated sites are mostly information websites that are managed by user members. Wikis. Wikis are websites developed by a number of users who can add content. The function is to allow members to collaborate to build web pages. Some features include member accounts, search tools, structured language, and editing features. Forums. A forum is a site where users post comments and information. The function is to allow members to have structured discussions. The features of forums include groups, moderators, administrators, posts, ratings, messaging, threads, and some safety features as well. User-generated content. User-generated content is the content that has been made by users of the site or community. Video or photo sharing. The function of video or photo sharing sites is to share and receive content from other members. The features of these sites include profiles, content management systems, tags, comments, and ratings. Blogging or vlogging. 
A blog is a website updated regularly. A vlog is a video blog. The function of blogs and blogs is to create online diaries of events and share it with others. Some features include profiles, text editors, uploading tools, tags, comments, and ratings. Social bookmarking sites is using tags to categorize web documents and URLs. The function of these sites is to allow people to share websites and URLs with other members. Some features of social bookmarking sites include social networking, third-party integration, tags, and user accounts. We've received requests for monitoring individuals from the digital technology video, so here it is. Digital devices can be used to monitor what someone's doing. I know that's pretty creepy, so it's not a surprise that there's a lot of controversy surrounding this. Here's how individuals' movements is monitored. CCTV, closed circuit television, automatic number plate recognition, use of ID cards, IP or MAC addresses, GPS data, or GPS trackers attached to clothing. Some of the advantages is, it can be used to find lost people, locate friends nearby, identify people on networks, locate criminals at events, keep travelers safe, and verify people. Disadvantages would be, it is a breach of privacy, expense of setting up and maintaining systems, energy consumption, and making, feel, making people feel uncomfortable or not trusted. Finally, from the third chapter, we got requests on the search engine section, so let's play that as well. Search engines compare the words entered by the user against words in a database and then displays the closest results. Search engines are found in web browsers and smart personal assistants like Alexa and Siri. Some examples would be Bing, Google, Yahoo and DuckDuckGo. Now let's take a look at some of the features of search engines. Keywords Keywords are the words that a user types into the search engine to look for matching results. When entering words into a search engine, make sure to only enter the important keywords so that you keep it simple. Search types. Most search engines allow users to specify the type of information. For example, you may be able to choose images, then vector or clip art and so on. Search tools. Most search engines allow users to filter the results provided by them. For example, you can filter by date, region, or language. Suggested and autofill. Autofill is the automatic suggestion of a completed word or phrase that is provided as the user types. Suggested results would change as you continue to type, since the more details you provide, the suggestions would narrow down for autofill. Sometimes autofills are suggested by your browser history. Search syntax. Syntax are the rules that describe how words and phrases are used in a language. Here are some syntax that you would use when entering something in a search engine. And returns only results that match both words. Not returns results that do not include the word. Phrase matching returns only results that have the exact entire phrase. Miraculously, we received zero requests from Unit 4, Online Goods and Services, under which we have two videos. 